Hi everyone, I'm Yun Ji Lin. Uh, I work in from MedArt. Uh, I'm quality analyst and mostly supporting the uh, product metrics, data metrics, data qualities, and project planning. Um, so today I'm going to talk about building height, uh, especially uh, going through some details about, about how we extract uh, open data, open LiDAR data to and convert it to open maps. So in today's talk, I will cover five parts. Uh, the first is give some background information. Um, and then I will talk about our releases, the current release and future plans. And then I will go through um, the high estimation strategy that we have. And, and after that, I will talk about some quality assurance and accuracies for our estimated height. And then uh, at last, I will go through some technical challenge we encounter and some future work. Um, so, so with the increasing needs of the 3D buildings, um, especially um, for a lot of metal products, as you know, then the, to build a 3D model in level of detail once, building height is actually one of the important characteristics, 3D characteristic uh, that we need for analysis and visualizations. And we first think of to use OSM data, but when we look at OSM data, we at the time that we start this project, we, it's we are surprised to find that 20% uh, of the US buildings um, are lacking the high information. And when we check globally, we also find even less than 10% of the building are, are lacking high information. So we then look around and notice the USGS actually has a 3D elevation program which can, uh, has LiDAR data to be used. So we start. We go with these three depths lidar data to as to have the estimated height as scaled. Um, after we produce the height data, we um, release as open data to overtures. Um, we think these data have values, but it's certainly not perfect because we we started this project sometime uh, earlier this year. So it's still kind of a young project. Uh, so after we release the open overtures, that we're also looking for looking for feedbacks to help improve the data. Um, so I mentioned about USGS. Uh, in case you, uh, you you're not familiar with that, so USGS, um, the full name is the US Geological Survey. Uh, it's a government agency. They have a program called 3D Elevation Program, which is managed by USGS, and they work with different vendors and other government agencies to collect and disseminate LiDAR and evaluation products. Uh, the evaluation products including, uh, for example, the raster, the raster DSM um, and uh, the bare, bare earth DEM. Um, so the goal of USGS for this program um, is to acquire LiDAR data across the nation uh, to provide the first ever national baseline of elevation data. And they also, so they, they, since they work with different vendors and different government agencies, so they find, and to collect data sets, so they define the, the quality uh, standard, which they call quality levels for data collections uh, for these different vendors and agencies. Um, so quality level zero is the highest quality, when the quality level two is the lowest. And this quality level is mostly determined by um, the, the accuracy and the point densities. And they also use the word units to scale the coverage. Um, the word units means uh, it could refer to a city or a city of the surrounding area or a county, which is on a high level of the city. Um, and in this, on this map here, it shows the distribution of their quality, of different quality levels. The light green cover most of the country is actually in quality level two, uh, whereas the, the very dark greens, um, they are the quality level one. And we released these data the overtures. Um, so I think in the, uh, Meta have multiple talks before my talks, and especially those from Ed, uh, my colleague over there, he mentioned about overtures. So I'm sure, I, I assume that everybody is quite familiar with overtures. Is anyone haven't heard about overtures so far? Okay, nice. <laughs> Great, uh, everyone have contacts. Um, so this is the homepage of overtures. Um, the data set is available in the download, download page. 
uh, may not be very clear here, but if you go to the website, then you will find the download page. Uh, the high data set is not within the main PDF, it's a separate uh, GeoJSON files, um, but you can find that directly from the download page. And we're also including the technical spotlight uh, to talk about, and it's an article to talk about some te technical details about the building high work. Uh, it's available in, under the resource page as well. Okay, so that's about the background information. Um, now let's move on to the release. Uh, so far, we actually only have one release, which happens in April. And this release covers Boston in Massachusetts, uh, Orlando in Florida, uh, Chicago in uh, Michigan, Phoenix in Arizona, Seattle in Washington State, and San Jose in California. Um, this, this area, so the release actually processed um, over six million buildings across the area of 30, 34,000 square kilometers. And, and next one, we plan to uh, process additional 60 million buildings uh, over the area of 87,000 kilo, square kilometers. And this area will cover Philadelphia in, uh, in Pennsylvania and Atlanta in Georgia, Austin, Houston, San Antonio in Texas and Los Angeles in California. Um, so this area mostly are QL1s and some of them are QL2 and the map here shows, actually shows uh, the, the size and the shape of war units, the, the scale of courage that USGS is using. We mentioned that in the background information section. Uh, in the future, we do want to process more QL2 data because it, is, it covers the majority of US buildings. Um, how do we estimate the height? Well, what's our strategies? Um, simply speaking, um, so we have input data. Like we, so when you want to estimate the height of buildings, there's two things you need. One, of course, the building footprint. Uh, second, of course, is the LiDAR point cloud that from USGS. Uh, the building footprint, we have three resources. One is OpenStreetMap, one is S3 uh, community building data. Uh, most of them are from city GIS department and the Microsoft Machine Learning Buildings. So we conflate this building to choose the best footprints over the three resources to process. And we overlay the building, overlay the, light, the LiDAR point clouds uh, with this building footprint um, and then start our, our high estimation process. Uh, we process, um, we actually process one word unit at a time. So it's not just one single building at a time or one tile. It's because the word unit, um, actually this is another background information about USGS. The word units it's collected by different vendors under different circumstances. Um, so they, they could have various uh, characteristic and quality. So that's why whenever we process the building high work, we are using the word unit as the base. So after we have the input data available, um, we start our uh, technical processing. So first is filtering. The point cloud data, it's including uh, not just buildings. In, there's so many information in the point cloud data. Uh, the USGS point cloud data, some of them has point classification, but some of them don't. When they have a point classification, we will filter out those ones are not relevant to buildings. Um, so, and we can only use the building point for uh, the building high uh, estimations. But when there's no point classification, we just keep all the data, all the point clouds data, um, because we don't know what to filter in that case. And also some area, they, they may have a classification, but the classification might be, might be not reliable. So in those cases, we also keep all the, the point, the LiDAR data for, uh, for further processing. So um, once we finish the filtering steps, we, uh, then we sample each building footprint. Uh, we sample the height of valid LiDAR data uh, and take the 98 percentile. So why 98 percentile? Because in, we noticed that uh, usually you would think about the, the tallest point of the building uh, that is, the, is the, supposed to be the, the maximum height. Well, it is in general, but it doesn't may not reflect the rooftop height. 
And the rooftop height is usually what we need because at the highest point, the maximum height of the building could be could be maybe you have a chimney of the building, then you count the that the height, the top of the chimney um, of the building as the maximum height. But we want building heights, not including that part. So and our research shows that 98 percentile often time um, it's it could represent the rooftop height instead of the building part height on top of the roof. Uh, so we get the 98 percentile and uh, we get the height, um, but that is just one part of the building height. Like buildings is not always on the flat ground that at the exact it, on the sea level, right? So we need to have the height of the ground to to get the accurate building height. So um, in our work, these times we we didn't use the lidar data data to extract the height of the ground. Instead, we use the we use separate resources. It's just because in, because the time matters. It's not because we couldn't. Um, so we use uh, the the one resource we use is the USGS published one meter uh, bare earth DEMs. That's one resources. The other one is. The DEM may not be available uh, all over the country. So whenever there's no DEM available, we fall back to the uh, lower resolution uh, raster-based um, global elevation data sets that we have from some of those resources. Um, so we got the ground height, we got the rooftop height, and we subtracting the roof from the ground, then we got the building height. So um, we so when we get the building height, uh, we cannot just publish it. Uh, we oftentimes will apply quality assurance to understand better about how accurate our estimation is. Um, so our quality assurance approach including three steps. So first step is sampling um, because we process that's six millions and additional sixteen millions of buildings. And it's hard to work on, look at every single data, so we do sampling. Uh, second is annotating, and the third is validating. So for sampling, um, we literally slice the target area, the, the word unit, uh, into Zoom 15 Bing tiles. Um, does anyone know Bing tiles? Uh, so Bing tile is, um, I, I forgot the the terminology about that, but you can you can literally look that up on Google. So it's um, so I would say a Zoom 15 uh, Bing tile. It's approximately the the area of that is approximately 1.5 um, square kilometers, if I'm if I remember correctly. But anyway, so we slice the data into Zoom 15 Bing tiles. Um, and we count the building, the number of building in each tile, and categorize the tile into high, medium, low density. So um, here, the, the map here actually shows the sample data that we, uh, the tile where we have sample data in each uh, density in Dallas. Um, Dallas is one of the where you need that we have. Um, so we evenly sample data within uh, each tile in each different densities, and then we will get uh, the sample data sets available. So after we have the sample data set available, we, uh, in fact, we include a human in the loop. So we have our human annotators to annotate the highest points of the buildings using an internal tool that we built. Um, so in that way, and the annotation happens on multiple oblique error imagery. And after we finish the annotation, so each one, they, they need to annotate every single building, not just one building. After they have finished annotating the building, they, and we move on to the validation step, which is checking the height of tri triangulated points and the LiDAR estimations. We calculate the differences, which is the error. And based on the statistics, we improve the algorithm and pass or fail each word unit. Um, the, so overall, we we checked almost 10k buildings so far. The the figure up there actually shows the distribution of error between lidar, uh, the lidar estimation and the human annotations. You can see most of them, the majority of them, uh, has less than one meter error. Um, but we do have certain areas have overestimations, um, like 
the graph here down here actually shows the differences uh, when we have point classification and when we don't have point classification. So Santa Clara County in blue is the one that has the point classification. So we can see that they're inclined to have a fewer uh, overestimates. You can see that on the left side of the graph. But uh, Maricopa County is the one, is the area where you need, don't have point classification. So in that case, we, we uh, inclined to have more, more overestimates in the presence of trees and other objects. So, um, yeah, so we think this work, uh, we can satisfy this work by far, but we also encounter a lot of technical challenges. Like the noisy source of ground heights that we have been talking about, and the point cloud without classification, which the last slide actually shows the differences uh, of the overestimate count. And the, um, also the misalignment uh, between the building footprint and the LiDAR, because the building footprint may come from different sources that not fully align with where the LiDAR, how the LiDAR being scanned. And also new buildings. Uh, some area they may have new buildings which the footprint, building footprint uh, reflected, the, but the LiDAR data doesn't reflect it. So we do have a solution for each challenge at this point. Like for example, the ground height. Next step, we point to estimate the ground height directly from the LiDAR point clouds instead of using the, the elevation product from USGS uh, or other resources. Um, we also, for the second challenge, like the point classification, we also uh, in like, plan to work on our own classifications so we can get, get better estimates about the height. Uh, and then for our building alignment, we also want to apply the control point methods to align the, the maps better. Um, and the new building, actually we are already apply this strategy, like whenever there's a new buildings, we just refuse to estimate it because we don't have good data from LIDAR. And for the future world, um, so right now we've only focused on US, but we do plan to expand this work beyond US to international LIDAR data sets. Uh, we also want to estimate the height of the building parts because we want to, we, right now we are working on level detail ones, but if we're moving on to higher level detail models, we definitely need the building parts high, uh, high estimations. Uh, we also want to estimate rooftop type um, that also will help the higher level of details. Uh, we, we also plan to use another model that from other meta teams uh, of the cementing a tree in imagery locations which would help the point classifications. And we're also looking forward to have more collaborations. Um, current plan is combine the Microsoft height estimates from imagery with ours. The Microsoft estimate height also available in GitHub, uh, in their GitHub. And we also want to release the, uh, the high de level of detail models from other partners as well. Uh, since all these buildings are attached with OSM ID if they're from OSM data, so we also want to contribute the data back, especially the high data, back to OSM using the two slide rapid. Um, and in the like, more distant futures, we do hope to release our approach as open source uh, in that way that uh, the community can also uh, use our approach and make improvement on top of it. So at the end, I, I really want to um, have the credits to our amazing engineer team, uh, including Eric, Kurt, Yanan, Jacob, uh, and Jennings. And also special thanks to our partners uh, in Overture and the USGS. Thank you.